What's going on everybody? And if you're wondering why I have my hair the way that I do and I'm wearing a little bit of makeup, it's because tonight we're going to the opera. Et à tous ceux qui vous like, les sourires en plastique sont souvent des coups d'achetage. Another thing is, if you're wondering why I sound like Scarlett Johansson right now, then you may have noticed that in my last video, I went to Universal Studios and I got on the mummy ride and I yelled like I was being murdered. And all I did was scream. Like, if I feel anything, but I'm just gonna scream. So my throat is like, I just, I think I did more damage to myself yelling than I did just sitting on the ride. <laughs> this has been an event that I have been wanting to be a part of since I first heard that Carmen was going to be in San Diego. Carmen is one of those shows that even if you've never seen it, you know of it. Kind of like Ghostbusters. I've seen versions of Carmen before. I've seen it in ballet. I've seen the Chachadito come in, which is like a 90 minute condensed version of it. And this is my first time seeing the full length three hour opera. I'm super excited. This is, this is something that I've been planning for the longest time. Tickets weren't cheap. But I got third row. We're going to go backstage. We're going to ask the cast some questions. And we're going to have one hell of a time. I like to um, do what I call fasting before a show like this. You want to go into the opera completely fasted from any story. So don't watch any movies. Don't read any books. Stay away from any kind of fiction for the, less, for the next few hours. That way when you actually see the show, which is, believe it or not, exhausting, you, um, you come in it with a fresh mind. For the last few hours, I've just been um, watching the news. Got a nice little setup going. The backstage tour isn't for another another half hour, and from what I understand, it's going to be right behind me, right, right there, right here. A lot of people underestimate how exhausting it is to watch a show that's three hours long. You think you wouldn't get exhausted because you're just sitting in a chair doing nothing, but because it's a stage, it's not a movie theater, right? There's no CGI, there's nothing that helps your imagination. It's just you and the stage, and so your brain has to fill in the blanks for the things that aren't there. And consciously you may not notice it, but subconsciously it does take a toll on you. We're here early. So, I'm going to pick up my ticket at Will Call. Center right, orchestra. This guy rings a bell when the show's about to start. The backstage store was great, but we couldn't have cameras inside, so I couldn't record in there. Fun fact, uh, during one of the tech rehearsals, the um, Mrs. Soprano who plays Carmen, Jimmy Costa Jackson, threw up on her dress because the blood she had in her mouth was so gross. I thought that was funny. And another thing, opera singers don't have the blood capsules that Hollywood actors have. Uh, she had to drink the blood through a straw. So that was another interesting, interesting fact. Uh, now, we're gonna head down to the lecture with uh, Dr. Nick Ravellis, who's great. Um, if you've ever seen him or heard him talk about opera, you'll be convinced nobody loves opera more than this man. I always have a lot of fun listening. Enjoy the lecture. Hi, welcome. Thanks for coming. Enjoy Thank the lecture. Good to see you all. I'm Nick Ravellis, your animateur for the evening. I'm going to liven things up a little bit. In that tiny house, those cymbal crashes and the full orchestra blaring aloud with that great tune that you hear. Another great lecture from Dr. Nick Ravellis. Thank you, Dr. Nick, for that. I will admit I was falling asleep, but not because of the lecture, more because of the... It, just the music was really nice. And Orchestra B will get... Which would be... Right down here. So the orchestra. This is one of my favorite sounds in the world. 
right before a performance. You can hear the orchestra tuning their instruments. Love that. And the Paris Opera, I mean, from Bizet himself, Les Pêcheurs de Peur, a very popular and famous French opera. So I always ask my fabulous director to plant some water on stage for me so I can, you know, rehydrate. And um, yeah, but after one and two, I'm always like, and I'm done. That represents the past, the present, and the future of French opera at that point. And Bizet's genius was putting all of those different styles together. For example, he's got a lot of what we call bel canto, so like Italian composers. Good for San Diego Opera. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, so I know last year, sorry about the voice, um, in the wake of the Me Too movement, there was a, an opera company, I think in Florence, Italy, that changed the ending so that it's actually Carmen that kills Don Jose. Um, first of all, have you guys heard of that or were yes, you involved yeah, in it? And what did you think of that? I live in Florence, so uh, I, I was listening to everything that was happening uh, around that time. And I'm, I'm pretty against something like that. I mean, I, I have no problem with anything being modernized, changed in, in some way, as long as the story and the storytelling remains and the thrust of the story and the feelings of the characters remain musical and make sense. Um, so they can put it whatever, wherever and where, however they, they want to. But changing the story to that uh, extent, I found to be very objectionable. How do you feel about that, uh, Ginger? Well, one thing that I, found, I, I think is interesting about that is that we want uh, female empowerment, which I would support. Uh, but uh, I think when we take away her death, she's a martyr to the female cause. This was written in, what, 1870? Yeah. 75, yeah. 75. And she came out and said, I'm saying no to a man. Yeah. And I would rather die exactly. free yeah. than live a slave to a man in quiet at home. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. that's why it's so strong and why it resonated for so many years. We're still playing it. Because you're showing that women are strong and we can say no and she's free. Hey, hey. So, Carmen, San Diego Opera, fantastic, loved it. The baritone who played Escamilla, Scott Connor, fantastic, my favorite, stole the show. The actress who played Michaela was also really, really, really good. I think she was the only person who had the loudest um, standing ovation right after Carmen, of course. Ginger Costa Jackson, who played Carmen in this production, she seemed to play with a lot more vulnerability than most. It made the ending a lot more tragic than what I think it should have been. In normal productions of Carmen, she's seen as this heroine. It's almost like killing her is not going to kill her, really. Costa Jackson played it with a lot more vulnerability, so when she dies at the end, it just feels just a lot more sad. The direction was really good. At times, it felt like the chorus and the actors were a little restricted on movement, but the voice definitely made up for everything. Uh, Robert Watson, who played Don Jose, I think he really hit a stride in the second act, and it just got better and better and better. In an interview with Dr. Nick Ravellis prior to the show, he mentioned that he was playing a version of Don Jose where Don Jose was more psychotic, a sociopath, and it was very different from any Don Jose I've ever seen. Usually Don Jose is seen as this man in love. In this case, Robert Watson plays him more like a school shooter, more like just this uh, person who's almost unashamed of being the villain. So it gave it an eerie, horror-like feeling. Overall, fantastic production. I'm really glad I came out and saw it. Keep your eye out for these uh, these performers. I think they're all really, really good, particularly uh, Scott Connor and Robert Watson. Ginger Costa Jackson was also really, really good. So thumbs up to those guys. And, of course, thank you for watching, and uh, see you next time.